Welcome to our video series introducing website creation. In this video, we'll look at an advanced technique to create borders. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk through quite an advanced way to make border changes to tables. So let's go back to the original table and put the cursor within the internal table. Table, select, table, edit, cut, and then we can put the cursor at the start of the page. Edit, paste, and then this table here, which just has the border, just select that and delete. We can delete that by right clicking. Actually, let's go to edit. Excuse me, put the cursor within the table. Table, select, table. That's what we want to do, and press delete, and it's gone. Now, if we save, and back to the browser, and refresh, we're back to the table without any borders. So, the way to make very specific changes to borders within the table is... Go back to Composer, and we need to do this in HTML source view. And even if you don't understand the HTML commands, if you just copy what I do, you should be fine. Okay, a couple of points you need to know. TD stands for Table Divider. Essentially, it specifies where a column is. Table Row TR stands for Table Row, and it starts a new row in the table. So everything that begins with TR and ends with forward slash TR, wherever it is, everything between those TR tags is then contents of one row. For example, start of Table Row end of table row, and that's specifying the top table row. Then you see that TD breaks up the table, so that's the start of the first column, end of the first column, start of the second column, and end of the second column. So TR creates table rows, and TD defines the beginning and end of columns within the tables. For example, if we just wanted border on the left side, let's say we just wanted a line here between the body content and the navigation menu on the left. So go to Composer, and we need to find that section of code. So here is the TR tag that starts the second row. And the second row is this, the main body of the page. So back to Composer and td, and it has all this, and here it says style equals vertical align top. Basically, it specifies how wide the column is, and so on. You can see 130 pixels, background color, background color is that, so what we can do is, after the last semicolon, is space, so after the last semicolon there, we can add border-right, which is specifying what the right border is going to be like, colon, space, and then you have three pieces of information to give. The width of the border, so we can say 2px, 2 pixels, the type, for example, dotted or dashed, and let's use dashed, and then the color, and we can type in red. And then at the end, that's all we need, actually. If we save that, and OK, it may not look any different within Composer, but if we go to the browser, that's how it looks. So that's a 2 pixel wide red dashed line, and we could add that all the way down the document, so we have to add it here, and also here. So we would need to find those table dividers. Back to Composer, and HTML source, 
and it does require quite a bit of trial and error, especially if you aren't used to dealing with HTML code. So, okay, here's the start of the top of the table row, and here's the start of the first column. So let's add at the end, style equals vertical align top, background color, etc. Semicolon, border dash right colon, 2px dash red. And OK, that's done. And let's find the last TD, the last table divider. And we could probably do an automatic search, but let's just look for it manually quickly. And there it is. There's the last table row. There's our code. So border right colon space 2px dashed red. OK, let's save that and back to the browser and refresh. And let's see if we put it all in the right place. And it appears that we have. So now that we've done that, let's quickly go into the gray at the top and the bottom and see how better it looks or if it looks better. Let's just double click on this table cell, background color. Let's go with white and OK that and OK that. And down at the bottom, double click in this corner so we don't click the text by mistake. Table cells, background color, and white. OK, OK. Save, go to the browser, refresh. And OK, that's how it's starting to look. We have a clearly defined column now, and there's the top navigation, there's the bottom navigation, there's our column divider, and there's our left navigation. So you see, it's really starting to take shape. Slight changes like making the left border a slightly different color and adding lines between table cells can make a dramatic difference to the look of the page. So back to Composer, back to the source. So options you can have here, you can have border right or border left, border top, border bottom, so pretty self-explanatory. With each one, it's border dash left, border dash right, border dash top, and so on. And then colon, space, and then 1px, 2px, 3px, however many pixels wide you want that line, and then dashed or dotted. And there are actually more options. I'll come to that in a second. You can have any color you want here, any color which HTML supports, red, blue, black, and you can also use HTML code if you wish. If you're really interested in more options and getting more involved in HTML, I often recommend the site HTMLref.com. It's continued to stay around for a good while, and it's an incredible reference. What we're doing, actually, is adding what's known as CSS properties, Cascading Style Sheets properties, because HTML commands really, you could say, look out after the layout of the page. And CSS applies more advanced formatting. Now, there is overlap between them, but that's really a basic definition, you could say. Here we go. Border top, border right, border left, and so on. So that's really a great reference there. Okay, now quickly back to the page in the browser. And just out of interest, let's add a dashed line around the outside of the table as well, just to see how it looks. So back to Composer. So what we need to do is, this is the start of the left column, so here we need to add, after the semicolon, but before the quote, we need to add, okay, so what we're doing here, we're dealing with this table and this row at the moment, this top row and this top left table cell. So we're adding, we want to add a top and left border. So back to Composer, and border left is border dash left, colon, space 2px, dash red, semicolon, and then border top, 2px, dash red, semicolon, 
save to the browser, refresh. And okay, I was actually in the wrong cell. You can see how easy it is to make mistakes when you're doing this, but a bit more trial and error, and it's easy to fix. So actually, let's go back to the code, and let's fix that. And I want to go with a border top. I want to get rid of that because I don't want it. So delete that, save, back to the browser, refresh. So as you can see, we just got rid of that border top. Back to Composer, back to HTML source view. So here's the top row. Here's the start of the left column. And what I was trying to do was border top 2px dashed red, semicolon, border left, 2px dashed red, and OK. I typed that wrong, didn't I? That should be red. And let's get a semicolon before the last quote. OK, save, browser, refresh, and there we go. It's starting to take shape. So rather than you watching all this, I'll pause the video and quickly finish this up, and then we'll continue when I've done all the borders. Okay, all the code is done, and now if we go to the browser and refresh for the last time, you see how it looks. We specifically just added dashed red borders at certain points of our cells. So this way, there's a cell break here, there's a row here, but it's not apparent with the borders we've specifically chosen to show. Now there's a red dashed border around the entire main body, and actually I missed that bit. It doesn't matter, but you can see how it looks. That's just one bit outstanding there, but that's how it looks. It's right around the edge, and it divides the navigation column from the main body content. So even though I would say that you can see that it gets a lot more involved and advanced when you're working at the HTML code level, but you also have a lot more flexibility about what you can do. So I suggest you spend the time to get used to working with HTML. But now you can see how it looks. We built this page from the ground up, and I think it's gotten progressively better as we've added more and more to it. I feel this design works very well. And as you can see, it can be quite straightforward to create a page that both looks good and works well. And really, all you need to do is create this page once, or your main page once, and you can then use it as a template and just copy it for every other page you want, and then just add the content later. So I can just use this as a template for every other page, and then just add the content as I want. So that's step by step how you can get started using the entirely free software Mozilla Composer, and create a site that looks good literally in a half an hour or an hour, and then of course it's up to you to finalize the content. As I mentioned, at a certain point, once you really want to get control of your web pages, you'll want to dive into the HTML and the CSS. But that isn't even strictly necessary, because much, if not most, of what you might want to do is available through the Composer interface. Even if you're brand new to creating web pages and building websites, just follow along step by step with these videos. And I've literally taken every step necessary just to create these pages and this small website. So just follow along, and these are all the steps you'll need to get your first website created.